Hello, I'm Max Offie Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jay Pelson, and I'm here to give my player ratings from another crushing 1 0 home defeat for Everton. Uh, much like two weeks ago with the game that Everton have done 99% of it right, I've been the better side, I've deserved to score, um, and I've deserved to take something from the game, most likely, you know, a kind of result where. 70% of the time you probably win both these games, 85, 90% of the time you you take something um, from both games, um, you know, four points and then it's a very rare occurrence that you come away from these two games, the other team uh, scores the first shot on target and then the game over and we, we, we fall to defeat. Today was just, it was like Wolves, uh, sorry, it was like Fulham but worse, it felt super frustrating but I think... Yeah, because it is so early on in the season, because there is still trying to window left, yeah, come at the ground, you see it looks like we're gonna get that better in, which is is good. Obviously it's the January window coming up still. There's loads of time for things to happen. So it's not a time to get all panicky and start thinking that, you know, we're knackered after three games. If we could still have a re we could still have a good season. I'm not saying that we're going to, but there's enough time for this to be Changed around, and obviously we've got five players coming back to fitness. Uh, a couple of players hopefully coming in in the window, and um, yeah. But we'll get into the actual team ratings. John Pick was given him a six. He had to make one save, which was an absolutely unbelievable save. I didn't even see it in real time. Um, I um, when I was at the game, I was right behind it, and there was loads of bodies. I thought it, the cross had come in. And it sort of hit a player and fall and bit of a scramble and the Tarkovsky's blasted it away. But no, he made an unbelievable save. I wouldn't have even talked about that if I hadn't um, rewatched the highlights uh, or, or watched the highlights, should I say, from, from the game today. But an unbelievable save. A uh, bit of a mix-up of him and Tarkovsky. I thought it was actually Tarkovsky's fault for, for letting a ball go. He should never let go past him. Um, but we, we weren't punished for that. And then... I didn't think he was necessarily a fault for the goal either. You know, both these games, is, he's probably felt like the other goal. He's been doing his role, like in terms of Leno and and Saar have been incredibly busy, which is you know, obviously normally what what Jordan Pickford is. Um, uh, yeah, there he is. There, Nathan Patterson giving him a free. I thought another really poor performance from him. <sighs> just. I don't know. I just think we managed him terribly. We should never have signed him in that January. We should have got him in the summer or in the summer after and sent him out on loan. The fact that we brought him in, he wasn't ready. Lampard then, desperate for a right back, didn't play him. Goes to play him, he gets injured. Um, comes into the last season. I, mean, I talked about this. I talked about this last week, but then he comes in, plays all right, gets injured again. Um, he's out the team again, comes back in, gets injured again, and now he's back in again. He'll probably end up getting injured again because he's having to play either 90 minutes of every game or not play at all. It's just mad. So, um, I don't know. I, I said before the game I would have brought Mikalenko in, who I'm also not a huge fan of at the minute. Um, and I would have put Ashley Young to right back. Didn't think he really affected it on the goal. Difficult for him because he's quite a small right back. Big strike coming in. Definitely wasn't at most of label come on to that in a second. But, yeah, his crossing is just... It's so poor. I don't know if he's always been a right back as a kid, but he is only like what twenty twenty one now. So it's not like he's twenty seven, twenty eight, and he used to be a you know a centre mid or a centre half or something. He got moved to right back. His his crossing is woeful. He offers nothing going forward, and he's so average defensively. And um, when Wolves got in earlier on in the game, it was him losing his man. Yeah, it's just he's in the fire line at the minute, and he's, he's not performed at all well. So. Um, yeah, next to him, a bit shaky, obviously, as well, because he's alongside James Tarkovsky. had a poor game today. Again, I felt um, won the ball higher up the pitch again a little bit, engaged them a little bit more like he did against Fulham, but ultimately he's not <laughs> not even bothering to mark the massive six foot seven striker who ends up scoring. Doesn't do enough to put him off. Sent Fabio Silva through as what, what looked like to me, like he should have cleared it, say him and Pickford. Now have covered themselves in glory, but yeah, poor performance from him and... <sighs> I mean, is he going to come out and say this week the good thing about Wolves beating us is that they got battered last week and we can do it again next week? I don't know. I mean, that was a stupid thing to say. I can understand what he means, but 
not the right time, nor place, or club to say something like that in. Um, and then he's followed it up with a really below average performance. So put him in there. Uh, Jared Bramford giving him a seven. I thought uh, yeah, if he kept a clean sheet, he probably would have been higher than that. Cause I thought he was excellent. And look, he probably gains a few points just by not being called Michael Keane. But the first like five minutes, he, he brings a ball down and just plays it off, and you think. That was just that was just easy. It, everything he did all game made it look easy when he's under pressure. Like I'm okay, he's under no pressure. It makes it look difficult, you know. And he's so two footed. He, he's hitting passes with both feet. He's spraying balls. Like he didn't always reach the target. Or whatever. He's so quick. You know, there was one run. I think it was uh, Sarabia or Cunha or someone in the second half. And if it's Michael Keane, he's left for dead, and we probably can see it. Bradford gets back, tackles him, wins the ball. Absolutely flying. And he just brought that calm this all games, I think, helped the team, helped the fans. We looked so much more balanced when we got the ball back there because he can hit on his left foot. He can play those passes out to the fullback, he can play them inside with that nice curl, whereas obviously a right foot is struggling a bit more to do that. And yeah, I thought he played well, and, I, and you've got to be keeping him in the next game, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Michael Key's days as, a, as an Everton starter are over, they have to be over. It's got to be all about. Um, Jared Brandt right now and, and what he can do so I was pleased with him Ash Young I thought was really really poor doesn't stop the cross that comes in for the goal his set piece was terrible I gave him a 2 absolutely woeful I know he's playing left back I know he's 38 I know it's a dire situation but I expect it better from him that's for certain um, moving on to midfield just again giving him a 4 I thought he was really poor so his pass was awful ok he wins the ball back he tackles he gets about the pitch of course but no, I thought he was poor today. I'm doing nine, giving him a four as well. Again, his passing was just so lackadaisical. <laughs> the one tackle he won all game, it felt like he, he got injured off it. Um, I'm sure he's fine, but yeah, I mean, look, he, look, he brings this kind of thing on himself because he's talking about Champions League and he's given all that, and then he's produced three really bad performances. Like he's not even a starting eleven player. I don't think for Sean Knight when everyone's fit because James Garner was there at the end of last season. Um, you know, when he rung the changes, he brought in me and he played the core higher. He um, brought Dwight McNeil back in. He played James Garner as well in, in those games. And yeah, I Arn mean, has been really below average to start this season. Not not good at all. But obviously, he's young. And I said all summer he needs another season of Everton before he can think about moving on. He's proved that himself. <laughs> no one else has to do that for him. So yeah, James Garner, I've given him a six. All the efforts, plenty of perspiration not loads of inspiration I think but he put on the cross that we should have scored from second half don't know why he's not on more of these set pieces because he, he's got to be better than what Ashley Young was, was dishing out today um, had a shot that was well saved by Sarr as most of them were and he just felt like he was coaching Patterson through the game and every time he got back he's like telling Patterson where to go who to mark what, you know, what to see look it's a complicated system of playing because we've got like four centre mids and then one genuine winger so it's a bit all over the gaff and we really need James Brown to go back centrally as quickly as possible because he's not a winger. He puts in the effort, as I say he should have gotten an assist, he had a couple of shots, but we're not getting enough out of him from that position, so that's where he is there. Abslai de Corey scores, has a disallowed, look just off as well, which is obviously very frustrating. Um it's one of them where as soon as I jumped up I lines right in front of me and I was like, oh, we we're knackered here, but then it takes so long it's it's so frustrating. Has to score the header near the end. Uh, well, I say near the end, actually, before Wolves score, wasn't it? We should have won us the game that, but he's failed to do so. Uh, some decent link up plays and decent pass, and giving him a five and a half. If he'd scored that goal, obviously, he would have been much better. He still is our most recent Premier League goal scorer, which is bizarre. Should have scored against Fulham as well. Not a good start to the season for him either. Lewis Dobbin, again, talk about. Pers uh, perspiration not much inspiration Lewis Dobbin was kind of that today look he's out his depth isn't he? he's not a Premier League standard quality winger do I think he will be it's obviously impossible to say but from what I saw today I, I liked his some of his characteristics I liked the fact he got the ball and he was trying tricks he was trying to go outside his man inside his man he's been squared up against the Portuguese international he's played for Barcelona so as, as you know average as Nelson's made I think has been since he's come to the Premier League that's a difficult kind of level level of pedigree to come up against, and he's very quick as well, so he can make up for a lot of things. Um, but a good good shift from him. I've given him a six and a half. Felt like he actually played quite well second half before he got taken off. But yeah, hopefully we see more of Lewis Dobbin um, in terms of 
a Doncaster game, then I'd, I'd much rather go out on loan and try and get a full championship season, see how he gets on from there. And then Arnold Dunjuma miss another one on one today. Um, I, miss my, I mean, from people who weren't at the game but were watching from home, these are the that chance was replayed over and over again, suggesting it was an offside, uh, but then it wasn't on the Sky Sports highlights, so I don't know. But it, you know, if you just scored that, and it's like, okay, a bit like the Fulham one that you should have scored. Okay, even if it doesn't count, it can give them a bit of confidence, give the crowd a bit of a boost, thinking, oh, we've scored here, let's, you know, that's, that's how we can do it. It's fine margin, that's not counted, but, um, yeah, he, he was he offered trouble to the uh, Wolves back line, but not quite enough, still getting fit, and obviously... I think with better players around him, he will do well. But for today, I've given him a six. I think the attacking players were, you know, he created enough, but he just didn't score. Um, whereas the defensive players kind of let their guard down towards the end. And um, I think it was kind of in spite of their performance because I don't think they helped us going forwards. And then defensively, they let us down right at the end. Uh, Yusuf Shimiti, obviously a brief carry for him, Tom Cannon and Michael Keane. Um, no point really ranking them before Shimiti showed some decent signs. Um, decent level of physicality. Looks a bit mine is disconnected from his legs kind of kind of vibe. Similar to something I saw with Nicholas Jackson the other night for Chelsea where he just didn't quite know where he was going, what he was doing, but brief cameo, but I think I had some some good moments in and then Cannon and Keane. I mean Keane is just all I can think he did was give away a free kick on the edge of our own box when he's playing up front, for God's sake. Like, I'm sure Dice probably said to him, go and do as much damage in the area that you do in their box, uh, sorry, in our box, and he, he still failed to do that. So, yeah, um, as I say, hopefully this is the last time we talk about a game where Everton are truly dominant. Supposedly, according to Sofa score, I think it was, Jose Sarr and Bern Leno have had the two best individual performances this season, and they were both in goal against us. So, keep the faith. Let's pray there's an extra body or two in for the next time we play against Sheffield. And then let's get the three points there and just try and peel away from this awful early season form rim because I think a lot of teams would be sat here with six points out of nine. And that's where Everton should be right now and we're not. So, look, keep the faith. I, I fully trust Sean Dyche. I trust some of these players, obviously quite a few of them are new or different. So, let's see how it goes. But... Um, yeah, a tricky one to take today, but we'll go again. So let me know your thoughts on the game. Let me know your thoughts on player ratings. Give us a like and subscribe, and we'll speak to you next time. Thanks, Sean.